Welcome all you lovely people to your weekly energy update and we're looking at the week of June 5th through June 12th. These are timeless of course so no matter when you're coming across these uh, they will have messages for you. I would trust your intuition if it brought you here there are definitely messages for you. Now we are just entering the Saturn retrograde which started on June 4th and uh, Saturn is going to be an Aquarius for this entire period starting June 4th going through October 23rd. Now Saturn was the original traditional ruler over Aquarius before Uranus was discovered so they do have this kind of old bond between them so there's some extra juiciness and flavor that will be with Saturn coming through this period. You can kind of look at Saturn as like this strict grandfather who teaches us their wisdom and when we do the work for them and do the work that they present to us then they also reward us with you know inheritance right so they are this taskmaster in a way and so we just will look into where are they wanting us to do some work and because of this period of time from June 4th all the way through October 23rd, it will be in Aquarius in retrograde. It will be in our 11th house of Aquarius energy. So the classroom that we're going to be in revisiting our beliefs, because that's what Saturn does. It has us challenge how we think about a particular area of our life. So the 11th house is about like our uh, beliefs, our interactions with society, groups of friends or colleagues or whatever groups we're a part of. And it can be like our view of the entire world as well. So during this retrograde, uh, you know, Saturn is always having us do the work, but during the retrograde is kind of like our time to review our notes we've been taking as we're going through a classroom. We reflect on what we've learned and really what changes we want to introduce into our lives when Saturn goes direct on October 23rd. So, you know, Saturn goes into retrograde every single year for about a third of the year. So this isn't something new and surprising for us. It's just something that will, um, you know, unfold for us. So for this reading, what we're going to be looking at is what uh, would be in our highest experience to review during this Saturn retrograde. And I'm going to have a reading for each individual zodiac sign. I'm going to jump into yours right now. All right, all you Taurians, this is your weekly energy update, and we're going to start off with this archetype deck. And FYI, any of these cards that I use in a reading, I do list in the description box below. So we'll start off with this archetype deck, which is perfect for, you know, the question of asking spirit what area of your life that you can reflect upon during the Saturn retrograde, because these do represent different parts of our personality or life so we shall see one more time here all right so for our Torians, what would you like them to know what area of their life would you recommend okay they do want this one right here we're also going to pull from the power of surrender deck and just see what else in combination with this other card I would like you to know. So Torians, what else? What else would you like them to know, please? Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. So put that there. And then we're also going to pull from the uh, Sun and Moon Tarot for clarity around the message. So we'll do that real quick as well. And then we'll dive in. So what else for, our, okay, <laughs> for our Torians, please. Okay. Okay, they do want that one there and that one there. I actually want to put this one in the middle. So we will do that. What else? 
Okay. What else? Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, they said not all these. <laughs> they do have this one here. Okay. Sorry. Over here. So they went to this one here and here, and then this one here and here. All right. So that is it, and we'll get into these. So we already saw this one here, which is surrender to effortlessness, right? Yep. And it says, stop pushing so hard. The art of living means going with the flow instead of trying to force the river. So yeah, what? why are you trying to make it so hard? <laughs> and then we will see what architect comes with this, which is the prostitute. I know. Let's read, though, because it has a light attribute and, of course, the shadow attribute as well. So the light attribute says accentuates the challenges of surviving without negotiating the power of your spirit. And the shadow attribute is places material considerations and security above self-empowerment, which, you know, this is very much... Uh, Torian energy <laughs> and I don't mean the prostitution I mean the about the worth because you are ruled by the second house which is all about your values and your worth and monetary stuff so this is like uh, a poster card for it um, because it is this awareness of how do you give up your your worth how do you give up your energy for the security feeling right and there's this you know, the message when you combine these two together with this surrender to effortlessness, it's like you're making it so hard trying to prove your worth, trying to gain these things where you might be given up worth, thinking that it's going to get you something that uh, is going to give you more worth. It's like this investment, this, it's almost like you're pl playing this, uh, value stock market with your life essence you know and and it's interesting because the five of pentacles over here um, which we'll jump to next really talks about your the fives are about change of perspective and it is about worth i mean this is earth energy as well which is what um you are of course you're an earth element and it starts off looking like this, where you feel like you're abandoned, like you're um, without support. And usually they'll show people like walking through snow in the winter and you just feel like this abandoned feeling like you're uh, headed towards losing um, your, your life almost. Usually they'll have like a crutch and a bandaged head and um, and no shoes on and and all of that where you just feel totally like the outside world has abandoned you but the transformation that happens which is what they really want to focus in on is that the five of pentacles the five pentacles up here in the stained glass represents the creator represents the universe represents um you know whatever you feel that higher power is and the transition that happens, the change that happens, is rather than seeing and thinking that your essence, your needs, your daily moment-to-moment -moment needs are met by the outside world, by humans, you realize that it's the creator of all things that has endless resources, that loves you unconditionally. They actually are the ones who bring your your moment by moment needs, though they may sometimes come by the hands of humans. They're just the delivering company, the delivery man or woman that are bringing that to you. But it, the source that it comes from is the creator of all things. So there is this change of your worth, how you're perceiving your wholeness and completeness that's coming in here with these cards here. Do you have the six of cups which talks about pleasure um, at the top here but the six of cups cups are your emotions and the six of cups is sometimes called the nostalgia card but i look at it as that there is this change that happens when you go back and reflect upon old memories and old ways that you're perceiving things and i really feel like this comes into this uh, prostitution um, 
you know, emphasis here about the giving up of yourself because the Six of Cups brings in this awareness that each moment is of either unconditional love or of the fear of losing conditional love. And when we grasp that and we understand it, we see that if a, if a memory isn't of unconditional love, then it was a fear. And when the human goes into fear, then what happens is the blood starts rushing from our brain to our arms and legs to run and, uh, you know, or fight to get back out of danger that whatever triggered us. And um, so we act out of our minds, literally. We make choices that are reactionary like an animal rather than emotionally mature like an emotionally mature human being. And so we go through this understanding that when we go back and look at a hurtful memory that kind of sold out that taught us to sell out our worth to get this something out here uh, we realize that in those moments those hurtful moments that were full of so much pain that it was full of fear and that's what was pricking our heart and we realize and understand that when our little child inside of us goes and feels unsafe or feels out of control and sends it into fight or flight mode, it's going to do what it needs to do reactionary wise, animalistic wise to feel a control again and feel safe again. So it'll do all sorts of crazy things because it's out of its mind. So when we start to look at a situation and we go, oh, I was in fear, they were in fear their actions their words whatever they did were not about me their little child inside of them was just out of their minds and whatever it felt it needed to do to feel in control again to take control from others you know to feel safe and then we also were doing the same thing and we start to see that situation differently if it wasn't of unconditional love then it was of fear and that person and, and ourselves were acting out of our minds if we were in fear too and so we start to see the situation differently we start to see that other person differently we start to see ourselves differently as well it's not so hard you know this effortlessness when we're trying to meet all these external things to try to feel whole and complete it does feel exhausting. It does feel like it takes so much because there's this long list of things that we feel we have to do to be lovable and acceptable, right? That's what this Five of Pentacles, it starts off, we feel abandoned because we feel like we're letting down everyone, not meeting up to all of their expectations. They're not meeting up to all of our expectations. That long list of conditional love laws is what I call them. Things that have to be obeyed in order for us to be lovable. And they all contradict each other. There's a lot of more things on other people's lists than on others, you know. And so we go through this amazing awareness that comes from all this that we don't have to invest so much energy in the outside world. It's like herding cats. You're not going to be able to please all the people any of the time and any of the people all of the time. There's always going to be someone that is disappointing us or that we're disappointing <laughs> when we're looking outside of ourselves for that love, right? Which then brings us to like this moon in this hero font. The, the main card that they wanted to have centered here is the moon card. Moons are our emotions. They connect us, you know, to the heavenly realms. The, you know, uh, our bodies are made so much of water that we're affected by the moon phases just like the tides are. But the moon helps us connect to the spiritual realm, the higher realm helps us also get into kind of like the subconscious if you you know the high priestess card she is the the one who has the ability to go beyond the veil um, behind the veil underneath the surface connect to the spiritual realms she does that through this connection to this moon energy because the moon you know like our moon sign in astrology is our emotional center it's also what we revert to when we're in fear and in panic right and so this emotional piece is um, i think they usually have 
you know, sometimes it'll have like something crawling out of the emotional waters, which is showing the emotional subconscious things that are coming and being revealed. And that's what this Saturn retrograde is happening for you is to allow you to see these hidden old emotions and these memories, understanding where they're coming from and be able to see them in a different direction. Because, you know, you have the five of pentacles, which is fives are change, seeing, th seeing things from different perspective. You have the hierophant, which is the master number five, which is significant change in your spiritual uh, awareness, stepping up to a new level in your spirituality. So that's why with both of these together here, especially, um, it is about this connection to the higher realms and understanding that. I mean, you're understanding how loved you are, which changes your worth. You're understanding what happened in uh, you know what, these emotions that are bubbling around and are always running underneath the surface until you bring them from the subconscious into the conscious, which is what the Six of Cups will do for you. The moon will help you do that. The Hierophant is this beautiful energy showing that you are moving to this next level. <laughs> and then you have another major arcana here, which is the Chariot. And this Chariot brings in this beautiful message to help you with that Six of Cups uh, memory reflection and this is that you every moment you have that choice. Like I was talking about, every moment is a choice between unconditional love or the fear of losing conditional love. Here is the power. This is what is showing you that you have that power of choice. In any moment, no matter what happens in our life, we individually get to choose how we're going to feel about the situation and what story or interpretation we're going to put to that situation. And I know sometimes it doesn't feel like we're making a choice, but it's because we were conditioned so much like any other human when we were younger with the popular opinion on whatever, you know, like this thing happens, this is what it means, this thing happens, this is how we are supposed to feel about it. And it's so reinforced over and over again that it becomes eventually our habit to think and feel that when that thing happens, this is what it means or feels, right? And then it becomes so much of our habit that it becomes our reaction. So something happens, boom, we feel that. Something happens, boom, this is what we think it means. But this chariot comes to help you that during this period, you're going to begin to be able to question that when something happens, what does it mean? I get to decide. I, I have always made it uh, mean this, but is that what I want it to continue to mean? Also, when that thing happens, this is how I feel. Do I want to continue to have uh, my me feel this way when that thing happens? And you have this power that comes through this process. Then you also have the Nine of Cups, so beautiful. Cups, like we said, are your emotions. The Nine of Cups is about emotional fulfillment. It's almost like wish fulfillment, emotional wish fulfillment. The Nines are like the Hermit card in the Major Arcana, which is all about an internal journey where they find their, uh, they usually have like this lantern that they're carrying and within the lantern is this bright star, which is their higher self. And so the Hermit, the number Nines are about going internally um, for the search for the wisdom or the search for whatever the suit is. In this case, this is an internal search for your emotional fulfillment that you find within you, which is totally what sets you free. Instead of looking outside of yourself with this, you know, the prostitution piece here of, you know, I'm going to give pieces of myself away to try to fulfill things on that list of conditional love laws. It's like, no, you don't have to because you're going to find this beautiful wholeness, this happiness from within you, not from outside of you. And your final card is the Three of Cups, joy, uh, happiness, you know, it says up here, abundance even. So this is this wholeness and this completeness that comes in um, for you. And this, um, this card tells me this other thing around happiness too, that uh, happiness can feel like uh, in the future, right? When I meet these things and these things happen, then I can be happy. But joy 
joy is your natural state. In fact, the Three of Cups is a, also a special message from uh, Spirit Guides um, for me, saying that uh, they are with us. So you have, you know, your uh, guardian angel and your angels and your spirit guides, your loved ones who have already gone to the other side, your ancestors, of course, the creator and spirit, this whole slew of beings of unconditional love and light. They're always around you. You're never alone. And uh, they always are talking to you. It just takes us raising our vibration from one of fear to one at the higher vibrations of unconditional love and joy and peace and laughter that's the frequency at which spirit speaks and so this joy is the natural state of their being it is also a natural state of who we are with our higher self so you definitely this is like a connection to higher self higher self higher self higher self here um, or you know the spiritual realms so you do have this amazing message that's coming in for you here about finding your worth from deep within you and not from the outside it becomes effortless right this also kind of reminds me of the hanged man card if you've ever seen it they're usually hanging by one leg if i can pick it up yeah usually hanging from one leg but this is like seeing things from a higher perspective too because when you see things from a place of unconditional love and you kind of set fire to that long list of things <laughs> that need to be fulfilled in order for you to be lovable, life becomes so, so much more effortless than trying to herd a bunch of cats, a lot of expectations and popular opinions from the outside world. So this is going to be a wonderful journey over this next four, four, four and a half months from June 4th to October 23rd to reflect during this period of time. Saturn is having you look at this wholeness and this completeness and your worth and how you're looking at it, but bringing you so much clarity around it as you connect to the higher places, as you connect to that unconditional love of the higher realms. So I love this for you. I hope this helps. Um, if you are looking for more messages of love from above, in addition to these weekly energy updates, I also put out monthly readings for each zodiac sign and a few other types of videos. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those and be notified immediately when they become available, if you give this video a little thumbs up and click the like button, also click the subscribe button that gives you access to the notification bell. And when you go in there, if you select the all option, then you'll be notified of any new videos that come out on this channel. Also doing those things help spread the love and helps my channel grow in a significant way. Because when you like a video or you share a video, uh, comment on a video, and especially if you subscribe to the channel, Doing those things makes the YouTube algorithm so giddy happy and wants to share the videos of this channel with other people as well. So if you feel inspired to do any of those things, I am very grateful for that. Also, these are uh, general readings. And if you're looking for even more specific answers, uh, for your specific life, I do offer personal readings and all that information is listed in the description box below. All right, all you beautiful Torians, as you go through this amazing journey, please know every second of every day of your life that you are unconditionally loved by the creator of all things. And of course, I love you too. Have an amazing week. I'm sure I'll be talking to you very soon. In the meantime, you hang in there and you take care.